All right, guys, welcome to my stock channel, Stock Technical Analysis here. We get into the charts, we get into detail, and we anticipate where moves are heading in the future. We don't uh, react to moves we and react to headlines. We look for the future moves so we can make some money. So let's get right into it. But before we go, give me a thumbs up. You know, just continue to slap on those thumbs up. I really appreciate it. That's how you can pay me back. And I'll uh, continue to put out the content and give you guys the information that I'm seeing. So uh, mutual, it's a mutual beneficial relationship here, all right? So, all right, we got the triple Qs here. And don't mind the dogs barking in the back. They, uh, two Doberman pinchers, they like to, they like to bark. Um, all right, so we've got, um, let's look at the futures. So futures, we've just got this downward channel we've been working in. This is the NASDAQ futures. So, you know, it looks like we're going to run up and tag the top of the channel. A break above this channel would be bullish and probably set us up for a multi-day, multi-week rally. Uh, and so we'll watch for that. But for now, we're just looking for the top of the range. I let everyone know yesterday I got long at the close. And here's why on the queues. I got long the queues at the close. Looking at the hourly chart here, we had support right here at 181. It's, it's about 169. And if you roll it out, you can see that's exactly where we tagged here and here. So we marked that out. And then into the close, if I can zoom in here, you can see the last hour, we just fell right to support in that very last hour. It really happened in the last few minutes. So took a took a starter short there. I added on to that this morning when I saw the price action look good. And we're running up to uh, kind of the first resistance. I moved this to this 185. Um, kind of evaluating it and then um, just cross-referencing cross it with a, my level with a couple other people. Um, I had basically, um, you can see it right here. Here, you know, we've got, this isn't great, but right when we get into this cluster, you can really see the level. There's, it held right there as resistance. Here it was support, resistance, 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 support. Lots of reactions around that level. Here it, here it's, it is again, held the support. So we're gonna hold that as uh, as resistance. And I'll probably just leave that level up as we most likely are gonna chop around this le these levels for a little while. We've had a really impulsive move down. And you know you don't just crash in a bear market all the way down to the very bottom. You know, you'll have a big impulsive leg down, then you get the relief rally, and then, um, you know, you get your big impulsive, your next leg down. So I think we're close to, if not in the rally phase, um, it still will be choppy here because people aren't gonna believe the rally, but I think ultimately we kind of work our way higher. Uh, you know, maybe we close here at resistance today and then move higher. I'm probably gonna take my profit right up here uh, around this 185 level um, if we can get it. So. Um, that's not a bad gain for two days. I, you know, I short or I got long right here, and if we get it up to here, it's you know almost a 10% profit in uh, two days. Um, well, close of yesterday and today, so really one day. But I had the overnight risk. So far, it's looking good. Um, so that is what we're looking at there, and everything really. All the major indice charts have had just a huge downdraft, and now I expect them to have some some kind of a rally, depending on what you know. It could be a big rally, it could be a monster rally. You never know, um, or it could be a little rally. It's really hard to say. But um, so we're not going to go into a lot of those charts. Uh, the corporate bonds here; these are still you know struggling. I'm interested in shorting these up around this level of 123.65. Uh, but um, they're still kind of they're in this consolidation range but I'll tell you what when I see patterns like this you know what this is bear flag um, and it's they're they're easy to spot and then it's just how you you know you just have to see if they actually play out um, the flag we'll see how that actually maybe it's something like that I don't know it's it's hard to say we don't have enough data points on the upside yet but we'll just We'll just leave this right up here as the top of the flag. So there's your flag. And if that plays out, then we can say that the measured target is going to be, you know, something like that. And if I roll out to the daily, you know, it's a big move down. Let's see how far down that is. 
you know, all the way down there, 105. So it's a good move, um, good size move. And um, that puts us, yeah, it looks like there is a level right around there. Uh, right about there, I'd say. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not, yeah, you've got some support. See, it held support there, held support there, held support there. Um, what kind of was resistance right there, resistance right there. So, yeah, that's our level. So there's our major target in the corporate bonds, uh, most likely coming with the next leg down in the bear market. Um, so we'll go ahead and continue to watch that. But, again, that's something I am interested in shorting. I just would like to get a good entry. So kind of waiting for that to play out. And it looks like Triple Q's is probably going to hit my profit target while I'm making this video. So, uh, you know, this trade is dead. Again, I can't put out the videos in a timely manner to, you know, help you, know, help you day trade. But I can put out the videos and you can mark your levels down. And then when you come into support and resistance, things like that, when we have these levels, then you can take your trade. And, uh, you know, at that point, you're on your own. you got to manage your own risk. But, um, again... You know, set your stops um, and set your uh, profit targets and let the trades kind of, you know, do what they're going to do. <clears throat> Let's look at um, gold and and then we'll wrap up. I don't have anything else interesting really to look at besides, I mean, this is interesting, uh, this headline. You know, it's interesting to see these headlines. Moochin says Trump administration is looking to get cash to Americans. So now... I think Peter Schiff said in the uh, his thing last night, but Andrew Yang was the guy who wanted to give universal basic income. And it looks like they're kind of, you know, I don't know if this is an income. It's probably more like a Bush buck kind of thing. If you remember the Bush bucks when George W. Bush, first when the crash first started, he sent out checks to everyone just to go spend. And that's kind of what they're probably trying to do here is just send everybody money. Politically, I think it'll probably pass. The Democrats like to do that. The Republicans don't usually like to do that, but they they do. So throw out your political ideal ideas of what a political party means and what they believe in, because in reality, most of the time what I see is they'll do whatever suits their need at the time, and they'll, they'll, they'll bend and mold to whatever's going to suit their need. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. Um, and, you know, ultimately that plays into our gold trade though. You know, the more stimulus, the more money printing, because the reality is if they send money to everybody, they don't have the money. The federal government's running massive deficits. The, the budget, the national debt's huge. It's just expanding. There, there is no money to send to everybody. So the only way they can actually do that, where they would get the money is by selling a bunch of bonds. There's no real buyers of bonds except for the Fed, and that's why the Fed's pumping these QE programs. So ultimately, you know, the more they spend, the more the Fed has to do more QE, because that's, that's basically just the nature of our country right now. All right, let's go ahead and look at gold, see what's happening. Um, and the gold trade is a big macro trade, so I continue to cover it in every video because for me it helps, for me it, it, it it's, it's the trade that I think is going to be one of the major trades of the next decade. And, and I think that's important to, to at least anticipate or follow along. Whether it works out or not, nobody knows. But it's, it's the fundamentals are there for this to work. So, um, you know, now we just need to continue to watch the technicals. Um, gold. So here's your gold. This is an hourly chart. We had a breakout to the upside. So you can see we're in this downtrend. This is kind of your recent sell-off from the highs. We created this downtrend and just started working our way down. And we stopped yesterday and headed up. And then today we basically broke out. And so we've got a nice, clean, impulsive breakout. Not a lot of volume. You know, I don't see the vo or Sorry, I'm looking at this. Yeah, the volume, we did get increasing volume. So that's, that's good. Um, and we got a nice, clean, impulsive breakout. Um, flagging a little bit and then we're probably going to break higher so I think we're going to break above this 1570 or tag it 1570 is most likely going to be we're going to struggle up there for a little bit now that we've kind of dipped back below 1570 is a major 
resistance level. It's a major level. I get that from the weekly chart on gold. And if you roll that, it's on the daily too, but you can see here's the bottom of the range back here in 2012. And that was around 1570. And, you know, rolling up, that basically is our level. So that might be, you know, if this rally in gold is going to die, it's probably going to die at 1570. So that's completely possible. You know, this might be the first leg down. Then we run up to 1570, kind of a dead cat bounce, fail, make another leg down. I'm open to that. That's completely possible. So we got to watch that. And, and looking at the dollar here, the dollar has been extremely strong. So I'm, I'm not saying gold can't run with strength in the dollar because it has been. Gold ha dollar's been strong and gold has been running strong as well. So they've been kind of both working. It just helps the gold situation if the dollar is weakening. Um, and you, should, you will see a more explosive move to the upside in gold if you have a weakening dollar. Um, but we don't have that. So this is bearish for the stock market as well. Strong dollar it just hurts those multinational companies, CAT, you know, and 3M and all, all the big kind of multinational companies. A strong dollar just hurts them. So not good for the stock market. Um, not, not at face value, not good for gold, but at the same time, gold has been performing even with a strong dollar so we'll have to see what's going on because th things are changing in the things are changing in the kind of how the markets have performed in the past you know with the kind of the dynamic of gold stocks and bonds and how they work inversely together things are starting to change a little bit so we're going to have to continue to watch that so we can get a good read on it um, to make sure we know what's going on here's barrett gold it's been, uh, it, you know, had a nice move to the upside today. I sold a little bit of my position that I bought yesterday. So I bought that position right down here at the low. And we were ramping right up into uh, resistance. 1807 is where I have it marked out. You can see I just have that level marked out right there. And we overshot it and I sold some of that position on that overshoot right up in here, um, right around 1830. So now we've re kind of fallen back down. Um, and so that was a good spot to sell as of now. I bought that at 1330, sold it at about 1830 um, for a 37% gain or 35, above 30, we'll call it. So nice, nice uh, trade there on that position. And even though I believe in Barrett Gold and I still own quite a bit, you know, it, when you have a kind of a, a nice, base hit or home run hit on a, just a one day trade like that i think it's a good idea to take some profit put that money you know back into your cash reserves and look for a better entry on your core position so my core i still have a core position and i'm still looking for this to move higher but you know i'll pull a little off and i'll add a little on as we go along um, as we hit sp support and resistance levels and as of right now um, just, you know, as of right now, that was a good spot to take some off. So we did that. Um, and so we'll see, because the, the other thing is this chart could go either way. All right. I don't, this could go, this could go up or this could go down. This could have been a dead cat bounce. We fail here and we sell off. That's completely possible. So we have to watch that as of right now, it looks good. And we had a nice reversal yesterday, but we ran right into resistance and we're holding. So um, if, uh, if this reversal is going to play out, we'd want to see this, uh, you know, really hold. I'd like, I'd like to see it hold above this 1763, which is this candle, this breakdown candle right here. I'd like to see it hold and close above 1763 above the, the high of that day that, and, and the, the more, the better. I'd, I'd like to see it closer above this 18 would be preferred. Um, if we could get a close up around 1830 or so, that would be nice confirmation that there is actual strength here. And then at that point, we, we should start to see, you know, new highs, basically. Uh, AEM still, you know, well, AEM actually is looking interesting. So AEM, this is an, an Genico Eagle. Um, they're kind of a major player in the gold mining space. Here's your support right here, your trend line, this purple line. This is a daily chart, and you can see we dip below it. We're now trying, we're basically right at that trend line. So we'll see where this closes. Close, a close above is bullish. 
should move higher. It closed below bearish, you know, should, you know, probably move lower. So um, we don't know, but this has the potential to be a pretty good sized bear trap. You know, if we close above and we start to ramp higher, we start to get the short squeeze on anybody that took the breakdown of this trend line, uh, then they would be trapped basically. But we don't have the, really what you'd wanna see for a bear trap is like close right at the trend line, keep everyone guessing, and then tomorrow gap up, a big gap up. That would be a more preferred um, bear trap signal. As of right now, just to close above, you know, would be bullish, but it's not necessarily a bear trap. It didn't trap people in. Um, most likely people that shorted the breakdown, they exited their position yesterday when this thing was just exploding higher. Uh, and GDXJ, this one's interesting. Um, let's look here, let's see how the hourly, <clears throat> kind of a V bottom reversal. We filled the gap, here's your gap. Actually, well, yeah. There's your gap right there. Came up, tagged it, rolling over a little bit. So we'll see, see what this wants to do. Uh, the only thing I, you know, the only, I don't see a trade on this. The trade was way back here during this big dip and the ramp up back into the gap fill. Uh, I don't see a trade as of right now. If anything, it could easily go um, south. Silver, yeah, just weak. Silver's just weak, guys. Um, I just do not see any strength in silver. I know a lot of people are out there buying silver eagles and thinking it's the end of the world or something, the doomsday preppers, or I don't know who they are, but I, ultimately silver is just weak. It uh, does not look good. And I don't want to buy anything that's weak. You know, I mean, I want to buy, I, I'll buy weak things if I have some sort of an inflection point to, to track against but I don't see anything to track against. I see I don't see any inflection point that I can mark this thing against. So um, at this point, we're going to just have to stay away from silver, SLV. Um, and let's see, I think that's about it. Um, this guy, Someone pointed out this one, AUY Yamana Gold. This is what I see here. Um, here's your daily chart. If I roll out, we've got this We've got this trend line here at the top where we traded above, and then we broke that trend line. So here's your bear market, ran down, tagged it, and we've just, this thing hasn't broken bullish yet. It's still been in a bear market essentially um, because we haven't made higher highs. Here's your low, um, here's your low, here's a higher low right here. You know, this is potentially a higher low, but then we have a high, we have a lower high, so it's wedging. This is a wedge. Um, and so you can go a break above bullish, you know, a break, a break down below is bearish and just play it like that. That's how I'm going to do it. Here's your support line. So, I mean, you know, if we can break above here, that's bullish. Or if you want to trade, if it's down here against support, then you could take a long position and, you know, if it breaks below, just, you know, stop out. Uh, but that's an objective area to get long and, and, you know, and then you might catch it all the way to the top and then it could break. So that, that's a good area to potentially build a position. That's what I was doing in Barrett Gold. Um, flipping back to that real quick. This is the Barrett Gold down chart, uh, down channel. And I was building a position every time it was running into this, into this support right in here. And then as we broke above that and started to run, you know, as it runs in tag support, you can add to it and build your position. So... All right, guys, that's it. Um, I know I cover a lot of the same things every day, but the charts change every single day. So it kind of keeps you on point, I believe, for keeping track of where the markets are at. And also, I, 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 by looking at the charts every day, it gives you a good read or a sense of where the market might head by seeing how these candles are forming up. It gives you an idea of, okay, here's where the buyers are stepping in. Okay, there is support and strength here. This thing's going higher. Um, and you know, or this thing's going lower. So that's why I do that. If we have any new charts to look at or anything interesting that's for shaping up, put those in the comments below. I'll, I'll try to review those and see if uh, we can find any other trade ideas. Thanks guys, catch on the next video, bye.